Welcome back to the Silent Hill Commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Today, we're finally gonna get some shit done now with, uh, yeah. Silent Hill. Fuck. I apologize for that very disjointed opening. My speech pattern is kind of disorientated today. I just finished, uh, recording, like, the review things. It's not a review of this game, Sally, which, uh, is something that I really want to clear up right now. Like, initially, I was planning to do, like, a complete Silent Hill review marathon for, uh, Halloween, but then, Sally, my computer died alongside a lot of the, uh, footage and, you know, practically everything else I had with it, so, um, yeah. Although, as a consolation prize, the, re the review I'm doing right now has probably got to be some of my best work. I am quite proud of it. Of course, it's still in the editing process, but, you know, it's... Something I'm proud of, but anyway, in terms of Silent Hill, I figured that I might as well at least, you know, provided how many uh, parts I upload of this, I'll either get it finished by the end of this year or early 2015. Um, in terms of anything else actually Silent Hill related, um, this is the roundabout the point, or at the very least the area where the ending of the game can change significantly depending on what you do. Well, technically speaking, I mean, the hospital was also a very significant point as to how the ending can change as well, but... Uh, this is the point where you can either... Well, this is the very much the point where you can decipher whether or not you're going to get the good or bad ending. I'll talk a little bit more to it as we get to it, but, uh... Yeah, just so uh, those of you who want to, you know, achieve the good ending... This is the Nexus point. And, uh, this is around about the point where we don't see fog anymore. This is now going to be darkness from here on out. This humor is a little bit dark, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here all week, try the veal. My bad puns are pungent. <laughs> Yay. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I must drink some water. I believe this is also the area that introduces the uh, rompers. As you can see there, they're molesting Harry. Get out of there, man, that's scary. Okay, we're gonna hide in the bar. The Winchester! Oh, God. Oh, a cutscene. What's gonna happen here? <gasps> it's Kaufman! And he's being attacked by a rarely seen enemy in the North American version. Yes! Harry slayed the monster because he is Harry Mason. Demon Slayer! Yeah, take that, you bitch. You okay? Yeah, I guess so. I gotta say though, like, I mean, the conversations between Harry and Kaufman are some of the driest things I've ever listened to, man. Like, I don't know if, whether it's just down to the voice acting, voice direction, or anything, but it just comes off as, yeah, are you okay? Sure, whatever. But it's too soon to give up. No, how so? This craziness can't go on forever. Uh, it could and very much will, although... Rescue squad should be here any time now. Yeah, I don't think Stars is coming to save you, buddy. Although it would give way for a pretty good crossover. Seriously, think about it, like... Resident Evil and Silent Hill, together, battling evil in the face of... Fuck, I don't know. The T-Virus, which infects the other world somehow, even though it would probably make more sense for the other world to be like the setting. Although it would have been a pretty good concept to use um, had they gone with one of the initial things for uh, Resident Evil 4, which was initially going to have a, like, a bit more of a, a hallucination sort of thing. I don't know, it was one of the one of the Resident Evil 4 ideas, similar to how Devil May Cry was once Resident Evil 4. I believe it was called like Resident Evil 3.5. It's quite interesting, I suggest you research. But anyway, back to something Silent Hill related. Uh, Kaufman apparently leaves behind a wallet, I think, provided uh, past me can locate it. What are you doing? Uh, I think I'm just searching around for items around here. Do I completely miss this? I hope to god not, because... Uh, it's been so long since I recorded this, actually. Well, it's not been that long, but... I don't know. My brain's just completely fried right now. Yeah, so I'm just... Oh my god, stop running around, you bitch. There it is, you finally find it, you silly bastard. It's full of stuff! Great! I like how Harry just kind of loots the guy's wallet, man. I mean, granted, I guess that's what anybody would probably do in that situation, because, you know, we're not decent people, are we? Anyway, we have the code to a room, and we have a key to a room. I wonder what's inside there. Hopefully it's something plot-related and ending-changing. 
Uh, although, once again, I do kind of bring up the whole, like, survival horror concept of, like, raiding any items, no matter how insignificant it is, and one of the things he picks up is Kaufman's, uh, receipt for his shopping list. Well, as I said, survival horror games are teaching kids new things, just to grab any random objects they can, because, you know what, fuck it, man. Anyway, I believe that's all the items we came in here for, so... With that in mind, let's get out of here. Or maybe we can play a game of pool. Ah, yeah, fuck that. The only time we'd ever need to play pool is if it was in a zombie apocalypse. And I gotta stop referencing Shaun of the, the Dead. I love that movie, man. And Harry's out of breath. Yeah, believe it or not, being out, yeah, being out of breath does not actually hinder you that much in the game. I think it's purely a cosmetic thing, unlike uh, Silent Hill 2, where you eventually start slowing down after running for too long. Uh, I think this also applies to subsequent games. Except for Silent Hill, uh... Downpour actually, because Murphy Murphy only runs fast if he wants to, man. Like he's like you can run it like pelting it at full speed, but then like for the most part of the game he's just having a brisk jog. I mean I know Harry looks like he's um fucking power walking right now, because Harry Mason's that godlike man. He he doesn't run, he power walks. That's why Harry Mason's a badass, he can power walk. Because power walking is for badasses. Real badasses don't run. I mean Jason Voorhees doesn't run. He's pretty cool, huh? So you see, that's how I rationalize it as. Oh Jesus. No, I wasn't aware that the air screamers were still in this area. I think that's only for the other world though. Anyway, if you have a good memory you can just use the uh, bloody receipt code thing. And thus the door will open. I cannot remember if the code changes depending on which difficulty you're playing as though. Although, I wonder if you can sequence break, actually. That's another thing I'm curious about. Yeah, probably not, but even still, you know? Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh my god, the dog was actually still... I know, I, know, I know it was like a gameplay, but I swear to god it looks like it, the dog was attacking during a cutscene. Uh, it's probably something only I find funny, but... Hey, man. Uh, another interesting thing you can find here is that you find uh, some... Oh, I'll explain to it when we get to it. Although, we do find a Fetty X box here. Yeah, reference. Oh, look, rifle food. Yum yum. Isn't that delicious? Yeah, here we go. Uh, the diary. This is really more or less related to the uh, drug trade that was brought up in the uh, police department, actually. Uh, the drug trade, of course, being for White Claudia, which... Once again, I've often theorized as being the, the cause of all this in the original storyline, but that's just my fan theory. A GAME THEORY! No, it's not. So yeah, you can just read this person's diary. Yeah, it's quite creepy. I would read it out, but I skipped past it way too fast, because I ain't got time for that shit, y'all. Y'all want a single say? Fuck that. And we found somebody's shopping list. Norman Young. Anyway, it seems like... Oh, I've... Yeah, I very rarely check that, like, I'm kind of surprised, actually. You see, you learn new things every day with Silent Hill. So anyway, you open this up, and what do you find? A safe key. Anyway, you open up the safe, and let's see what- oh, it's locked, apparently. Yeah, this is one of the few locks in the game where you actually have to physically go into your inventory and unlock it. I mean, every other time you just click on the thing and... You know, you just see it. It just opens, you know? Anyway, what's in those bags I presume is White Claudia, uh, really because of the fact that this is more or less related to a drug trade. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of how they passed it off to the tourists, as uh, Lisa mentioned in a previous part. Provided you, you know, ignore me just, you know, completely spitting out verbal diarrhea everywhere. Uh, I really hate that term, by the way. It sounds disgusting. Probably because of the fact that it has diarrhea in it. Diarrhea in it. I'm completely stumbling over my words. Well, that's the curse of a let's uh, play. I'm not even a let's play. I consider it a commentator. I mean, the term let's play to me kind of sounds like the sort of, you know, lame face cam and, you know, lame jump scaring script reading sort of people that are just like, oh my god, you guys, this is the scariest game ever. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh, god damn. Sound like I'm about to. I'm, sound like I'm about to join a bloody power metal band. Anyway, better run away from the uh, rompers. 
I have no amusing nickname to call the rompers either. I mean, most people would just set off for, Oh, they're called the Reap Monsters! <laughs> I don't know, it just sounds too simplified for me. I've got to think of something cool or something witty. Uh, other people call them the Monkey Men as well. But to me, I don't know. For the sake of originality, I'm going to call them Wookies, even though they're not hairy. Yes. The Watch Out Wookie. I don't know. As you can tell, I'm trying to scramble for part names. Seems like I ran into Seam like two parts ago. Um, another thing I want to bring up is that really this is the area that I tend to explore the least for some reason. I mean, really, because... Oh no! Harry, your innocence! Ugh. Harry. There goes Harry... Well... Actually, maybe. There goes Harry's virginity. He's never gonna get it back now. Something's raped in t You know, this entire thing could be summed up by a corn song. But that's too corny. <laughs> Fuck, enough of the puns, Skull. You gotta focus. I swear to God, if somebody opens that fucking door, I'm going to bash somebody in the head. Nope. They seem to be avoiding me. Good. I apologize for that, that's just the distractions of my real life intervening. No. Let's just enjoy the exploration, man. Oh, by the way, fun fact, if you couldn't tell by the map over there, apparently this area of Silent Hill is called South Park. Yeah. Silent Hill in South Park. I could make a lame reference, but that would just be below me. It's locked. That usually means plot importance. Yep, open the door, and we get inside the motel. Which, oddly enough, is called Bates Motel. I mean, uh, Norman's Motel, sorry. I'm getting my things mixed up, which is supposed to be a reference to Norman Bates, if you could understand my confused reference. I believe if you read the paper on the table, it will uh, fill in the article that was clipped out in the hospital. I don't think I showed that off, though, but, uh, yeah, that's something to note. Anyway, the thing you're doing now, like, considering that you've activated at the bar, you've pretty much just started the Kaufman side quest, which is essentially where you're just gonna, uh, find a certain object that will become quite prominent in Silent Hill 3. Or, well, also in this game as well, but I'd say more so in Silent Hill 3, considering the fact that it's quite a... Well, it takes quite a disgusting turn of events in that game. Holy shit, a motorcycle! Harry, if you ride that, you're gonna become even more of a badass. I mean, seriously, dude, you'd be, like, blazing through the other world. Like I'm, like, I'm imagining, like, Harry in the other world with his motorcycle, with its wheels on fire, and it's just sort of like, and then, like, he goes up to, like, Sam Ayala, and he's all like, have you seen a little girl? Motherfucker! And then he, like, blasts its head off with a shotgun. Maybe that's just my juvenile teenage mind just thinking that shit up, but, man, that would be so cool. Although, for whatever reason, it just made me envision Harry as Ghost Rider. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. That'd be a pretty cool origin story. I mean, like, he could just... It's just Harry Mason, man. He's godlike. And I respect him for that. We're coming up to the end of the part, actually. Thank God, because I'm starting to lose my powers of talking shit. I never thought that was possible, but apparently so. Ah, oh, damn. Excuse me. Yeah, I was about to snooze there. And I was yawning midway through it. Anyway, you go inside these incredibly similar looking uh, hotel rooms and we find this. Oh, by the way, if you check the shower, Harry will have an amusing bit of dialogue where he says, No one inside. I found it kind of funny, actually. See? Nobody inside. Oh, Harry, you really are the god of references. Anyway, if you take a look at this, there is a cracked floorboard. Are there drugs inside? The crack is too small. Dude, I'm pretty sure you could probably like edge that thing out with your pinky if you wanted to, but we're coming to the end of this part, so I'm Scully, keep it new metal, and, and let's just hope to God that Norman Bass doesn't get us. Catch you later, kiddo.